from Cremata, our CEO and co-founder. I'm going to take you through a spin of the system. Uh, going to run a crisp 10 minutes on it. So I'm uh, happy to stick around longer if you have questions or things you'd like me to cover in more detail. Just go ahead and type in uh, any questions, anything on your mind into that GoToWebinar window. And uh, again, I'll, I'll uh, look for your questions at about 9, 10 uh, or, uh, or so Pacific time, so 12, 10 Eastern time. But with that, I'm just going to go ahead and get rolling. And let's uh, start uh, just with where we're going to get everything installed. So how Chromata works, as uh, you probably know, we're capturing time passively is what we call it. So as you work uh, on your computer, whether it's a Mac or a PC, um, we're going to take, uh, basically start and stop a timer implicitly as you move activity. So if you're in an email, we'll capture the time you spend on that email. For a document, we'll capture how much time you spent in a given document, what's the title of that document, so what are the details associated with that. So uh, you'll get started on our free trial page here. I can, uh, I'm actually going to copy and paste this into the chat window here for you as well. A useful link um, to keep in mind, you can get here from our home page as well. But if you also want to add additional devices for tracking, whether um, we're talking, again, computers or uh, mobile uh, tracking as well. Um, you can head on in here so you can add devices to your account. Let me uh, spin over to Chrometa itself. So this is my time that I've captured so far um, this morning. So how we're uh, capturing it is actually doing a play-by-play -play, um, down to the minute. So from the time that I start working, so in my case here, 8.22 a.m. my time, uh, what was I working on and for how long, and then what are the details associated with that activity. So um, we're, again, doing the play-by-play uh, uh, -play here down to a uh, level of detail all the way down to a minute if we're jumping around at that frequency. And then what we're doing is rolling that time up into a summary. So, uh, for example, for an email, uh, we're going to look at uh, what uh, email I was in, whether I was uh, reading it, replying to it, and what are the details associated with that email. So, for example, in this case here, the email that I've got highlighted, I spent two minutes on the email. That was a, the subject line, was affiliate program, so that's the start there. And then you can also see the to and the from of that email. So I've got um, this entry captured so that I can later categorize it to um, a given client, a given project. Make sure that this this two minute entry maybe I otherwise would have lost track of is going to end up on my bill. Um, let's also go over. Uh, I've got some document time here, so this is some, some time I spent in Microsoft Word. So I spent eight minutes in total working on uh, this document here. So you can see over on the right side, eight total minutes spent here. And then for websites that I hit as well, we're going to get the window title, and then we're also capturing the URL for you. Uh, there also. So when it's time to move uh, this time down to our timesheet, there's a few ways we can do it. So let's kind of walk through. Um, I'm going to walk through the most basic ways to do it, and then we'll get, get into some tips and uh, shortcuts. So um, at the most elementary level, just to move this time entry uh, down to our timesheet, what I'm going to do is just search for the project that I want to uh, move this down to. So I can highlight my project here. Uh, I can just click it if I want to move it down to that project, or I can hit the little pen button here if I want to also annotate it at the same time. What an annotation it is is uh, sort of the plain English terminology. So if you were keeping your time for yourself and you wrote down what you're doing, that's what the annotation is. So as you uh, can see, Chromat is capturing kind of the computer lingo, whether it's the title of the document, uh, information on that email. So this is where uh, what, what you would have written down if you were keeping your time by hand. So I'll just say uh, this document, uh, uh, drafting a document for Kevin. I'm moving it down to uh, here. So now you see it moves from my unbuilt time down to my timesheet. It rounded up to a 12 minute entry because I've got a rounding setting here set on uh, six minutes. So that rounded it up from uh, where it was, I think it was at 7, up to 12 here. And now this is a time entry that it still has the original uh, detail associated uh, underneath, um, and you can group multiple computer activities if you want. So I 
captured a couple of activities here. It's now a 12 minute entry, which I could either send across to a third party system, such as Clio, Time Matters, QuickBooks Online, or I could keep building out my timesheet um, as I go and then send it across um, in one fell swoop. So let's do that. Let's uh, kind of keep working on our timesheet here because I'm going to show you a few other ways that you can categorize um, your time. Uh, even a slicker way, let me grab this email here, is you can also create a uh, what we call a, a keyword-based rule. So instead of hitting the pen this time, what I'm going to do is hit the uh, little tag. What a tag is uh, letting us do is, is letting me categorize this entry and then also create a rule to do it every time going forward. So I can say, for example, or you could say, every time you see a keyword with my email address, uh, you can select what uh, project you want to move that entry down to. And then when you hit categorize and create the rule, uh, that will move it down. You can also do a little preview here, and this will show you uh, some of the recent entries that you're going to be categorizing um, when you do this. You can also apply it to the past. So if you want to say, okay, I want to categorize all these past entries and then do it uh, also in the future, um, we could create that rule um, as such. What this is going to do for us is it's going to bucket more and more time um, from our unbuilt time into our timesheet as it's captured. What this it, It's basically acting like um, folks who use email filters or, or I think they I think they're called rules in Outlook or filters in Gmail. That's what we're doing here is where we're just filtering something if we see it and then we're dropping it down um, to your timesheet for you. Uh, let's talk about mobile here. So I've got some mobile time captured yesterday. Uh, so let me show you what I've got here. So I have our Chromatic app installed on my uh, Note phone, which runs Android. So these are the uh, text messages and phone calls from yesterday. So for example, uh, Bert, our accountant, he called me uh, yesterday afternoon. I spent eight minutes talking to Bert. I can categorize this if I would like, although Bert bills me, I don't bill him, but um, let's pretend if he was one of my clients, I could uh, categorize that time again uh, using the same methods I showed you. I could also create a rule and say every, every time I talk to Bert, I want it to automatically categorize down here. So on Android, we're going to do phone calls. We're also going to do text messages. And then as you can see, I've got him in my contacts. So that's why it has assigned that time um, to him as well. For iPhone, a uh, little different just because as you know, Apple's a little difficult to develop for. So what we're doing on iPhone is we're capturing the uh, phone calls, text messages from your carrier, uh, but then similarly importing these into Chromatic so that you can categorize those from there. So I got a couple minutes left, so let me just kind of run through some uh, shortcuts for you, some things that I think will uh, hopefully help you out. So as I mentioned, so I start working this morning at 822. Let's say a bunch of this time is all uh, one thing. So I've got a lot of detail here. Let's say this is all for the same client. What I'm going to do is hold down the left, uh, the shift key while I left click at the top and then keep that shift key held down while I left click at the bottom. What that's going to do is categorize all the time in between here. And what I can now do is I want to say I'll we'll, we'll move it to a project and I can give it all the same annotation. So I can say that this was all um, all the same uh, really important uh, billable time entry. So that's going to be my annotation. You can see on the right here, it also flipped it all to the same category. Now back on my summary, what I've got is all that time, all those individual time entries, they're now down on my timesheet under that project that I moved them to, and they all have that uh, annotation that I gave them as well. And the rounding setting was also applied. So that's a nice way to sweep a lot of time uh, really quickly into a category. Uh, one more shortcut that we uh, recently developed over here, we've got the little slider at the top also. So if you want to move the slider around, you can see it's going to highlight entries below. You can hit the group button. This is going to let you group a bunch of entries into one uh, as well. So kind of a similar technique to the one that I just used here. Um, of course, rules we talked about, but rules can also be created from scratch here. So on the left side, you just hit the rules, and you can also create a new rule where you can uh, put in a certain keyword and say, I want to move it. Uh, anytime I see this keyword, I want to move it to this client, this project all the time. And then let me wrap up showing you our export. So as we're building out the timesheet, kind of alluded to this earlier, um, what do we do with our time from here? So we can export it out. You can go out to Microsoft 
can create a printable version if you just hit the print button. So that'll give you a little printable uh, version here. Uh, Excel will send it out to Excel. You can also send it out to a third party system. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we have practice management systems, accounting systems, project management tools. Let me give you the full rundown of our current integrations list. So in the practice management world, uh, Clio, LexisNexis, Tab Theory, Rocket Matter, uh, the accounting, kind of the who's who, so QuickBooks Online, Zero Fresh Books um, are the uh, options here as well. What uh, these will do when we export this time over, it's going to create these. So for example, if I'm exporting to Clio, we'll create these entries as if they were an entry that you created directly in Clio itself. So it's gonna have this annotation and uh, this time. So it's gonna go over um, as a, uh, for example, this entry here, the 12 minute entry will show up as a point two in Clio with the client uh, and project um, also, which we sync by the way for you also. So under our client list then, um, if I hit the sync with Clio button or whatever integration you have, we're gonna pull the project list from that system into ours so that you've got a consistent list that you can categorize to. Okay, so I am happy to take questions if you have any. So please go ahead and uh, type in any questions that you have. Um, I will uh, stick around, answer anything you'd like. Also show you how to get in contact with us here on our contact page. Uh, first question in. Uh, I do work for IT customers. I use zero for invoicing. Uh, I want to integrate my customers in the projects into an iPhone app so I can log time slots with the iPhone and then have those entries merge. Um, mobile app doesn't seem to have this capability. Any thoughts? Well, um, we can do mobile uh, time entry to a specific project. And then if you're going to, uh, if you got us connected up with zero, which I'm sure you do, but if you connect this up with your zero account here, then you should have your client list here, which should also be available from our iPhone mobile app. Um, if you need help syncing that up, let us know. Maybe we can sync up offline with you, but uh, that should, uh, these projects should be available then to you after you sync up with zero in the mobile app. How far back in time can we capture timekeeping from the minute you install Chrome Edit? So we can store it uh, forever, but we don't go back in time on your computer. We capture the time as you work. Uh, so from the minute that you install the time tracker is the moment that we'll be able to go back in time for you. We can store your time entries up to indefinitely for you. That's an option depending on the plan that you choose, um, but we do require um, that you, you have to have this installed because there's no way to search your computer, I guess, for, for, for your past history. Okay, and with that, it uh, looks like we're caught up on questions. So let me, uh, I'll give you another uh, couple seconds in case anyone has anything. Otherwise, let me give you our uh, contact info here. So we do live chat, phone, and email support six days a week. That includes holidays, so even the slow summer season you can get support um, from us. So Sunday through Friday, uh, six days a week. Any of the emails you got from me about this webinar, those will go back to me. So if there's anything you want to circle back with me on, please do. Um, otherwise, I thank you for joining. Hope it was helpful today. and Hope to uh, talk to you soon. Oh, one more question. Um, please explain how to capture time when using an iPhone. You mentioned from the carrier. Okay, so let's talk about iPhone. We have an iPhone app you can install from the App Store. Uh, that will let you log time on your iPhone. Now, if we want to get phone calls um, and such, then we got to go through your carrier. And I've got some, oh, should I want to go? Yeah, okay, this is what I want. Okay, depending on your carrier, these are going to be your instructions. So for, for Verizon, AT&T, or Sprint, you, you are going to grab, um, call log from your online, and then um, and then that's when uh, you're going to be able to upload it. So basically what we have uh, within Chromata is going to be uh, a little iPhone icon here. We can take in a spreadsheet with your uh, bill. So that's the way to do it for iPhone. Because unfortunately, Apple just doesn't let us pull direct from the phone. And then, yeah, please do contact support about the project integration on the iPhone. Uh, they'll be able, should be able to help you out with that. Okay, and it looks like that uh, is it for now.
I thank you for joining. Uh, again, hope it was helpful. And uh, please stay in touch. Uh, hope to talk to everyone soon.